Hello everyone, the professors in the building, Eric Coffey, host of GovCon Giants and the GovCon Giants podcast, bringing you delicious content. That's right, tasty content that you can almost smell. It tastes so good. Man, listen, I'm so excited to be here hosting you, taking the leap, right, solving a need. I believe that what I'm doing is a public good. And that's what justifies it in my brain and allows me to get up and do the activities each and every day that I do for you. I'm so happy to serve you, right? I mean, truthfully, this is a blessing for me to have the opportunity to be able to stand up in front of a camera and talk to all of you wonderful ladies and gentlemen out there, business owners, small business owners, and help share some insight into the world of federal contracting and the world of government contracting. If you have not already heard, we have a platform for teaching people how to do this the right way, GovCon EDU. Let me turn down this music in the background. I was jamming out before we got started, but that's what, now it's time to talk serious. Let's get down to business out here. What are you waiting on? What, what is it that's stopping you guys from taking a leap, taking a chance? What is standing in your way? Is it fear? Is it fear of success? Are you, are you afraid that this may actually work for you? Are you afraid that the activities that we're giving you that we lay out step by step will actually work and now you actually have to break the mold, break the cycle of sitting on the sideline, complaining, um, telling your friends all of these great dreams and all these great plans, which is what most of us would prefer doing is talking about all the things you want to do, talking about all the activities, talking about I'm going to have this big business one day. I'm going to have this great big old business with hundreds of people talking about it. I'm so accustomed to people just talking about these things and really not processing or digesting or even understanding the implications of what they're saying. So if you have decided that you're one of those folks that want to look, you know, I, I love having people feel sorry for me. I love having people just hear me cry and whine about all of these wonderful things I'm going to do in the world. And then that way, next time they see me, I can tell them, hey, guess what? I'm going to start a business. Hey, guess what? Look at me, girl. I got my business cards. I set up my LLC. Hey, I got my website domain name. Those are not activities that are going to get you to the point where you can have a long-term sustainable business with recurring revenue. You've got to get out there and do the work, right? Do the work. What does work look like? Work looks like the things that we talk about on our YouTube channel, things that we talk about on GovCon Idiot, the things that we talk about on, on GovCon Giants website, the things that my podcast guys talk about on the GovCon Giants podcast. Listen to the people who come before you. Like they say in the Bible, there's nothing new under the sun. And we all know that there are income producing activities and there's busy producing activities. Are you doing an income producing activity or are you doing busy work? Like Jim Rome says, major into minors. So and if you don't understand what that means, we'll pull up a Jim Rome video so you can see what he talks about when he says, are you majoring in the minors? Are you spending major time doing minor things? In some of my content, in some of my videos, I say you have to, right, first plant the seed, then till the soil, give it sunlight, give it water, give it nutrients, and watch it grow up. Have you planted any seeds lately? Look at your activities. Write down what you did last week, the week before, the week before that, right? Let's go back and look at your past three months of activities, and you tell me what activities have you done to get you one step closer to winning government contracts. Tell me. By the way, this fan is bothering me, so I'm going to turn it off real quick. Give me a second. So let's go back and let's look at some of the activities that you've done over the last, I don't know, six months, eight months, and see, are you moving the needle forward? Are you driving the car in the direction that's going to lead you to where you're trying to get to your destination? What is your destination? Do you have a plan? These are the things that we do. We help you right through the community out here to hone in and get laser beam focused. We help you, right? Commitment lasts long in community. And so we help you through a community have much more of a commitment. Now you've made the commitment to yourself by spending a couple of dollars and also not just by spending a couple of dollars, but by being part of a community of successful people. If you are out there, you've studied business, read any business books, what do they say? Look at the people around you. Are you the most successful person around you? Are you the most successful person in a room? If that's the case, you're in the wrong room. 
If you are the only one in your group or your circles that do government contract or know anything about government contract, or you feel like you know the most, you're in the wrong circles. Come to our circle, come inside of our family, join and be a part of us, learn more, grow more, earn more. We are here for you. We want to support you in your endeavors in 2021. We want to not only encourage, inspire, and motivate, but we want to uplift. And we want to push you out there. And we want to show you and demonstrate you, demonstrate to you through real life examples of people winning contracts on our Tuesday calls. Real life. We just had our, our last week, we had a happy hour and we celebrate called earn and learn, learn and earn. So we went around the room round robin style saying, hey, what did you earn and learn? Hey, what did you earn and learn? Hey, what did you earn and learn? So again, if you didn't earn, meaning you didn't get a contract, what did you learn? So there's two activities. So you earn, right? Meaning you got an actual contract or you learn, meaning that you were doing activities that led towards getting a contract. They just haven't panned out yet. And if you want to be part of a group of people where you can either earn or learn or do both, you want to be a part of a group that converts you from the learning to the earning then I think you should definitely make that investment, make that commitment, find it. Well, look, we, we, we all are suffering. We're all having hard times. Again, um, all of us, the like, and even if, again, maybe I'm not suffering personally, financially, but if my fellow brother, fellow sister is suffering, then I feel their pain. So I'm not too far removed where I say, hey, look, okay, hey, yeah, the pandemic's been great to me. I've made a lot of money, but at the same time, the pandemic's hurt a lot of people. I lost several loved ones this year. Okay. Uh, we had a lady that I grew up with in my church who actually, as a result of the pandemic, um, accelerated her uh, Alzheimer's. And now she's been put hospitalized, not hospitalized, but she's been put inside of a nursing facility where my mom just told me today that she had to spend $17,000 to even remain in that facility. I lost someone that was really close to me. It was almost my sister. And she was diagnosed with breast cancer earlier this year. And many people don't know this, but if you look back at the pandemic, right, they were putting the people who had COVID ahead of people, cancer patients. And so what if, what if this pandemic didn't happen and she was able to go out and have her cancer treated properly in the right response time and given the, the attention that it deserves, that it warranted, she might still be alive today. So don't tell me that the pandemic has not affected me. Maybe it hasn't affected me financially or in a devastating way, but it's affected me emotionally. My sister-in-law, she was put on a breathing machine. My brother, she didn't even work. My brother was a county employee who contracted COVID and then passed along to my sister-in-law who's at the home. And then she was hospitalized. He was sick for about a week and he recovered. But my sister-in-law, she suffered she spent three weeks in the hospital, came back, and is now on a breathing machine. Strong, healthy. I remember as a kid, literally, you know, cleaning the floors. She would get on and clean the floors with her knees. First person I've ever seen to actually clean the floors on their knees. And to think today she's on a breathing machine. It's just crazy. And we're not talking about someone that's in their 70s. These are people in their 50s, approaching 60. So fairly young people, strong, healthy. Right? She's not a smoker, light drinker. So you can do all of the things right and still life affects you, life impacts you. But I'm not here to talk down, to, to kind of bring you down. I'm, as you know, my message is always positive, but I just want to talk real and let people know what's going on, what am I experiencing, what am I seeing out there. As we've said in 2017, there's no better time to get in the world of federal contract in 2018 was a great year. 2019 skyrocketed. 2020 set a record. Are you kidding me? We are still setting records in world government contracting with things like Operation Warp Speed, FEMA and all these natural disasters, right? And then a global pandemic. So the federal government is still setting records for spending. And some of you still don't even know how to trip over and fall into the money. I mean, you literally just have to trip over and fall into the money and you still can't even do that right. I've got a book called Failing Forward and it says if I fall, I want to fall forward. Hey guys, listen, let me help you fall forward. At the very least, you can trip over and fall into this opportunities because they're there. I mean, I'm telling you, I have so many examples, so many students that just show up and they're given contracts. It's that easy. But, 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 but in 
fairness, there's a couple things they had to do first. Word, they had to learn contracting. So you've got to learn the acronyms. You've got to learn the words. You've got to learn what they say. You've got to learn who to talk to, how they're feeling, what to say to them, and how to respond. But once you get past all of that stuff, there's a whole world out here of contractors, contracting officers, waiting to award your company contracts. I can't say any more. I've tried showing you. I've given you examples. I brought people on here to talk to you. What else do you want? I'm not even sure what else people want anymore or what else I can say. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep teaching. I'm going to keep preaching. One thing that James Altucher told me that he said, the good thing about church is it reminds us constantly all the time, right, about daily devotionals, right, reading the scripture, reading your verses, same thing in any type of denomination. And I think what I have to do in the world of government contracting is kind of remind you out there, for all those people sitting on the sideline, remind you, right, that it's easier than you think. The, the average Joe can do it. The average Jill can do it. Doesn't matter what you look like. They're not discriminating against you for race, age, sex. They don't care. I've never been asked a question about my sexual preferences, or my sexual orientation. So again, I don't know what's stopping you. I don't know what's standing your way. I don't know if it's your spouse, it's your mom. I don't know what it is. Okay, maybe you're not inspired enough. Maybe you haven't hit rock bottom. There's a couple reasons that they've said why people decide to make the decision and take the leap. Uh, inspiration or desperation. Um, I'm not sure what it is for you. But I do know that the world of GovCon is continually to grow. It's continuing to strengthen. It's continuing to flourish. And we have more examples now of students turning down opportunities than we have of people trying and not getting contracts. I'm going to repeat that. I have more examples of students turning down opportunities than people who are trying and not getting contracts. And when I say trying, I don't mean going to beta Sam and bidding, bidding, bidding. That's not trying to me. That is essentially... For me, that's like doing push-ups on your knees. You know the ones. You get on your knees and you push up. That's not trying. I want to kick your knees from front of you and stand on your toes and do a push-up. And then I want to get you to do the diamond push-ups where you put your hand in here and you put your hand, you make a diamond and you put your nose in it. And then I want to get you to the point where you're doing clapping push-ups. And then, wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't stop there. I want to take you from doing clapping push-ups to doing handstand push-ups and when you get to the point like me where you can do handstand push-ups you master this thing you got your master's degree an MBA a PhD in federal government procurement how many people want to take the challenge how many people want to get off their knees and do the regular push-ups on their knees to do push-ups on their toes doing diamond push-ups to doing clapping push-ups, to then doing handstand push-ups. If you're with me and you want to take that challenge, look, show us over here at govconedu.com, please. We want to welcome more family. We want to welcome more members. This thing is spreading. And I'm telling you, we're running out of people to give these opportunities to. We're running out of people to give contracts to. We're running out of, of, of names. We're running out of, 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 of we, we just, we just, we don't have enough people in our circle yet to be able to accept all the pipeline of things that are coming our way. And I anticipate double, triple the amount, 3x the amount of opportunities that came to us last year to come up this year. Might even be 5x, depending upon how many of you decide to get off the couch, stop watching Netflix, stop you know, following the news. It does, and does, by the way, the election's in a couple weeks and it doesn't even matter. Yes, I have my beliefs and I'm gonna cast my vote, but regardless of which party wins the election, the government machine is still going to go on and on and on. It's going to crank up mm, and it's going to kick butt. Okay, the government, y'all know WAP song, right? 
about drive your Mack truck into my garage? Okay, well, the government is the Mack truck, and I want to drive that truck right through my garage. So, hey, listen, I feel like I've been rambling enough. I've talked my butt off. I just wanted to come on and say hi to Saturday, and I thought maybe I could talk to someone out there. Let's talk to a couple people. Maybe, maybe I can get someone who's sitting on the fence and saying, you know, uh, next year, uh, next opportunity, uh, I'm just going to go on and bid. And look, if that stuff hasn't burned you out by now, well, keep doing it. When it burns you out, we're still going to be here. We're not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. This is my life. The only thing I'm going to do is more of this, right, with more people. I want to find uh, and increase the network of people that I like hanging around with, being with, and talking about government contracts. So if you want to be part of that network and hang out in my inner circle where, all you know, like literally we're talking about buying banks now. If you want to talk about buying banks, open up manufacturing facilities, right, and do $100 million contracts, jump on my team. If you want to talk about low-hanging fruit and selling TVs, right, and making $500, I'm not, the, I'm not your guy. That's, you got to go follow somebody else. I'm not your guy. All right? I, if, if you Listen, not on my watch. This is not what I teach. It's not what I do. Not that I don't respect it or love it. I don't appreciate it. But, but the myth of starting at the bottom is just that. It's a myth. How come people who are privileged and people who come from multi-million dollar families, how come they don't start off working in the kitchen and washing dishes? How come those people who come from wealth, why they don't have their kids out there? If, if starting from the bottom is so true and it's such a reality, how come the people... The rich people don't have their kids out there washing dishes and cleaning the floors. When they have all they, they got 50 restaurants in New York City and all across the country. How come little Sally ain't back there washing the damn dishes? Huh? If that's true, if starting from the bottom is the real thing, and that's really the way that we're supposed to climb up and grow and build our organization, how come um, little Jesse back there, how come, you know, his dad who's got 500 trucks, how come he didn't start off changing the oil in the trucks? Why he didn't start off as an auto mechanic and learn how to fix the truck? Because it ain't about fixing the truck. It's about running a business and running an organization. It's not about washing the dishes, right? Because that doesn't teach her how to run a multi-million dollar organization. So, so don't fall for that trap of, I got to start from the bottom. I got to learn how to. No. If you learn how to do the work, you're never going to learn how to run a business. They don't go hand in hand. The person that is the doer is the worker. And the person that's the thinker is the leader. They're the ones that own the stuff. Do you want to be an owner? Or do you want to be a worker? 